born from secrets and cutting-edge code, the B-21 Raider isn't merely the next stealth bomber. It's a revolution wrapped in carbon and cunning. Built to slip through the world's most dangerous air defenses, the Raider is being recast not as a bomb truck, but as the brains of a lethal, networked fighting force. Unveiled in Palmdale, forged in hangars and high-tech labs, the Raider carries a radical idea. Fewer pilots, more capability. Imagine a single pilot in the cockpit and a weapon systems officer, a battle manager, who doesn't fly the plane but runs the fight. The U.S. Air Force is rethinking what a bomber does. No longer just a delivery platform for weapons, the B-21 is being shaped as a multi-mission penetration node, a stealthy hub that runs sensors, coordinates drones, and cracks open enemy defenses from the inside. The second seat? Less a co-pilot, more a conductor, orchestrating a digital orchestra of sensors, networks, and unmanned teammates. That change in mindset turns the Raider into a force multiplier. One aircraft, dozens of effects, a battlefield-wide picture, and faster kill chains. Optionally manned, the phrase sounds like science fiction, but it was in the original concept. An unmanned raider could loiter for hours, refuel mid-air, and pounce the moment a target appears. Persistence becomes a weapon, but optional manning raises the kind of questions pilots and planners don't like to answer. Human endurance still matters. Even one pilot faces limits. Sleep, fatigue, the stress of hours and contested skies, these aren't solved with software alone. And culture matters. Pilots are cautious about handing decision authority to algorithms, especially when stakes are nuclear. So why keep a second seat at all? Because the modern fight demands a mind devoted to the mission, not to flying. A WSO freed from the yoke of the yoke can manage sensor webs, talk to other platforms, and control drone teammates. That focus could be the difference between survival and catastrophe in a heavily contested strike. But optional manning collides with one of the oldest rules in modern warfare. Keep a human in the loop, especially where nuclear weapons are concerned. AI and autonomy promise speed and precision, yet they also raise alarms. The world understands ballistic missiles are largely autonomous, but mixing autonomy with an aircraft capable of both nuclear and conventional strikes risks dangerous misinterpretation in a chaotic fight. The Air Force must carefully draw lines, what can be automated and what must always have a human thumb on the scale. Get it wrong and you risk escalation, miscalculation, or catastrophic policy failure. The Raider was designed with open architecture, easy to upgrade, adaptable to new tech. That flexibility is its strength, but it's also a trap. Evolving roles and expanding ambitions can fuel requirement creep. As production ramps up, the service must lock down crew concepts and mission sets before divergence creates costly, mission-killing pivots. The Air Force plans the B-21 to replace legacy jets and become the backbone of bomber forces for decades. 60, maybe 100 Raiders in service. Each one is more than an aircraft. It's a forward node in a distributed, resilient network designed to deny adversaries sanctuary. The Raider sits at the crossroads of technology, doctrine, and human judgment. It can be the tool that extends deterrence or the complexity that trips it. The stakes? Nothing less than strategic stability and the future of high-end air power. The choice the Air Force makes about crew, autonomy, and mission will echo for decades. What do you think? Should the B-21 fly with one pilot and a dedicated WSO? Or is optional manning too risky when nuclear stakes are on the line? 
drop your thoughts in the comments, hit subscribe for deep dives into future weapons, and don't miss our next episode where we break down the Raiders sensor suite and what it means for aerial combat.